The story of Galileo is, is a very complicated one. It's very interesting because in this context it's taken to be emblematic of this perennial conflict between science and religion. But uh, historians uh, will say, that, and rightly, that this story is much, much more complicated than that. And I think the first thing to say is that the scientific reception of Galileo's ideas was almost entirely negative. That is to say that when Galileo espoused his sun-centred theory of the solar system, the scientific consensus was powerfully against it. And it was powerfully against it for quite good reasons. Firstly, Galileo had absolutely no proof of this. And the one argument that he did believe was a proof of a sun-centred solar system, his argument from the tides, turned out to be completely wrong. More than that, there was scientific evidence against it. And I'll give you one slightly technical account of this. But if the Earth is moving, which was a, a, one of the premises of Galileo's view, if the Earth is moving around the Sun, what we would expect is that there would be changes in the relative positions of the stars owing to parallax. Because the apparent positions of the fixed stars did not seem to change, this was clear evidence that the Earth was not moving. Now it subsequently turned out to be that the stars were much, much further away than anyone had thought, and we needed much more sophisticated instruments to detect parallax, which we now can do. But in Galileo's day, this was quite impossible. And this seemed to be, to most people, um, quite conclusive evidence against the notion that the Earth was moving, particularly if we add it to common sense arguments that suggest that we don't appear to be hurtling through space at thousands of miles an hour. So there are common sense arguments against it. There were very powerful scientific arguments against it. So, so when the church condemned Galileo, in essence they were simply affirming the scientific consensus of the, of the time. So that's perhaps the first thing to remember. There's not merely an issue of science versus religion here, but there's a debate going on within the sciences, and the majority scientific opinion was against Galileo. The second thing I think we can say is that when Copernicus proposed this theory some 50, 60 years before Galileo um, again brought it to the public attention, there was very little, uh, very little controversy um, and I think two things had changed between the time of Copernicus and when Galileo reintroduces his theory. And one of these that's important was the Protestant Reformation. And the Protestant Reformation makes a difference because uh, Catholic authorities were concerned about... Uh, they were concerned about people interpreting the Bible for themselves, which was the standard Protestant view. And they wanted to insist that the church and the church alone has the authority to interpret scripture. So when Galileo tries to argue that his uh, astronomy is consistent with the Bible, it appears to them that Galileo is behaving like a Protestant and wanting to interpret scripture for himself. And this, is, this was an explicit contravention of um, one of the standard Catholic views that came out in the Council of Trent, that the church was to be the interpreter of scripture and not individuals. So Galileo had the misfortune of propounding his theory at a time when the church was very sensitive to uh, claims against its authority. So I think that's the second thing that we see uh, that, that makes the Galileo story a little bit more complicated than, was, than we, we often tend to think.